break. Well, it looks like our victim dove head first into a meat grinder. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Looks like we're gonna have to call Jenny Craig because he came out a little bit chunky. What's up, guys? My name is Jackson from Jelly Red Giant. And this is my gaming news show. I don't have a name for it yet, but that's okay because it's not the normal format that it's gonna be because E3 is here. And uh, you may be asking yourself why I'm wearing stupid looking shades. It's because they're new and I think they're cool. So don't judge me. And also it's kind of bright outside even though it's overcast. So <laughs> yes, let's get started. So first off, I got my little handy dandy iPhone notebook here. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Microsoft press conference. So. They, first off, they showed off Halo 4, which was just incredible. They got these new bad guys called the Prometheans, and they're scary, and they use light beams, and it's awesome. And uh, the new studio looks like they're doing good, so pretty cool so far on uh, Halo 4. And also, I want to mention all the things I'm going to talk about. We're going to have links in the description below to trailers, all that kind of stuff. I don't know yet if I can use it in the video. You'll see, obviously, when you watch. But, anyways, yes. Next off in the Microsoft press conference, they called about some. They talked about something called Xbox Smart Glass, and this thing's really cool. It's like you can use your iPhone, iPad, just a lot of different, you know, Android devices to interact with the games that you're playing and the shows. So, if you're watching Game of Thrones and you want to see like the map of what's going on while you're watching the part, like where it is in Westeros, you can. Like, look at the map. I don't know why you'd want to do that. It's like a technology overload. They're like, we want you to call people on the cell phone while looking at the map while watching Game of Thrones. It's kind of ridiculous, but um, Xbox Smart Glass? I don't know. I have an iPad, I have an iPhone, I have an Xbox. I'm probably going to use the thing. It looks pretty cool. There was a little feature they showed with Halo 4 where the dude was playing single player and he got like something on his iPad using Halo Waypoint, which you guys know is like a little Halo app. And he got like uh, an invite from a friend to go play multiplayer. So he clicked on his iPad and it changed what was on the screen for him. And he just automatically saved and went into a multiplayer match. So that was really cool. So I thought Xbox Smart Glass was a really cool thing. Another thing they unveiled was Internet Explorer for the Xbox. So I don't know how practical this is. They're trying to make the Xbox into like the everything machine, everything box, I guess. It does everything. Uh, I don't know if I'll be using it because, uh, you know, got a computer or whatever right next to my Xbox, but it's kind of cool, I guess. Internet Explorer is kind of a piece of shit. I'm a Chrome guy, so anyways, that's my opinion. Another thing, they unveiled a lot of entertainment things for Xbox, like TV. Uh, I know they already have like Xfinity, Netflix, stuff like that, but they actually unveiled uh, a Machinima app, which is really cool since I'm a Machinima guy. Uh, so yeah, they unveiled that as well. Another thing they talked about was their Gears of War reboot. That's what I like to call it. It's actually called Gears of War Judgment. It's coming out in 2013 and it follows Baird, which was kind of like a secondary character in Gears of War. But uh, anyways, kind of interesting. I don't think I'll be buying that game, but interesting nonetheless. Another thing they talked about, obviously, they saved uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for the end. That was intense, I guess. I mean, you guys know I'm a little anti cod at the moment, but... I'm gonna buy the game. I don't care. I just want to see zombies. Seriously. Zombies is gonna be amazing, but it looks really futuristic, and it looks like it has a lot of change that Call of Duty really needs, in my opinion. Um, also, another thing, Resident Evil 6. I actually don't know if this was in the Xbox Live, or in the Xbox press conference, but I'm talking about it now nonetheless. Resident Evil 6, super excited. I was a big fan of Resident Evil 5. I know a lot of you, like, Resident Evil purists are gonna be like, no! Uh, Resident Evil 5 was really action-y or whatever. I don't really care. It was an awesome game, and we're going to see Leon Kennedy, Chris Redfield, people like that. I think there's something on my face. And so, yeah, so Resident Evil 6 looked really cool. Uh, lots of crashing and more zombieing and just a lot of awesomeness. You know, Leon Kennedy and Chris Redfield together in the same game. They've never done that before. Six Resident Evils is kind of crazy, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm a Zombies guy, and I really am looking forward to that game. Next off, we're looking at the E3 press conference, and they showed off Dead Space 3, which I'm super excited for, seriously. Can't wait for this game. It's like Isaac crashed on a like an ice planet, and there's more Necromorph craziness going on, and that chick that he met, it 
was like Australian or something, is also there. And there's also co-op, which is really cool, but they emphasize the fact that it's not going to be like a co-op experience. It's going to be a single play experience, but you can play it as, you know, with another player and it'll affect cutscenes and stuff like that. So I'm a big Death Space fan and that's kind of crazy for someone who's kind of a scaredy cat. But anyways, Dead Space 3, really pumped for that. Uh, they talked about Battlefield 3 Premium, which is a $50 service that you get. I think you get a bunch of DLC early. I think it's included, obviously. I think it should be included within that $50. You also get all the new guns, all the new vehicles, uh, server priority, whatever the heck that means. But uh, that looked pretty cool as well. They talked about Star Wars a little bit. I'm actually a fan of Star Wars The Old Republic. I played it, actually. Uh, a lot, but you know, this whole YouTube thing, I don't really have time to play an MMO, but that looks really cool, and I'm looking forward to more Star Wars stuff in the future. It talked about Medal of Honor Warfighter, which I'm totally not interested in. It looked really cool. Like, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna down the game because I'm not interested in it, but it looked like a cool game. I don't think I'll buy it. Um, you know, trailers and stuff in the description, if you want to go check that out a little more. Need for Speed Most Wanted. I was... This thing was really cool, in my opinion. Uh, Criterion, the guys who, are, who made the Burnout games, incredible, incredible racing games. They're remaking the Need for Speed kind of franchise. They did Hot Pursuit, now they're doing Most Wanted. I can't wait for this game. It's really beautiful, like all Criterion games are. It's going to be a winner, hopefully. It's coming out this October. And uh, finally, Crisis 3, during the EA press conference. Not impressed with Crisis 3. I think Crytek has found the limit that these gen systems can handle, you know, the Xbox 360 and PS3. So I wasn't really impressed with the graphics, it was like the rundown city kind of jungle, and also there was crossbows, there's a lot of crossbows at E3 this year. And uh, anyways, yeah, that's what I thought about the E3 press conference. Next off, I'm going to talk about the Ubisoft press conference. So they had a big emphasis on the Wii U, surprisingly. I don't know, the head guy over at Ubisoft, Ubisoft is such a huge company now got so many great hits so they have their own conference which is pretty cool i think last year was the first year they had that anyways so they had a big emphasis on the wii u which was kind of interesting to me the wii u seems a bit of like a bit of a gamble for me uh, on nintendo's part but anyways they had a big emphasis on the wii u also they talked about far cry 3 a lot which is totally weird it's like some kind of uh psych psychotic psycho thriller kind of thing going on they got some psychedelics some drugs influencing your decisions and actions and stuff like that so I'm looking forward to that so something else they talked about was Splinter Cell Blacklist which is a sequel but it feels like a new IP almost because they made Sam Fisher this new kind of younger tougher character model and I really like it it's very visceral there was like that queuing up action where you could queue up that guy that guy that guy and then be a pew 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 and kill him in like just a really fluid rapid way anyway so it's really cool so I'm looking forward to that. That'll be coming out in 2013. Uh, they talked about something called Zombie U, which is supposed to come out later this year with the release of the Wii U, which we still don't have a release date for. Probably going to be holiday. But uh, it looks like a cool zombie game. It utilizes a lot of the cool things that the Wii U can do, which is um, you know, something I'm really excited for. So uh, that'll be really cool. Uh, Assassin's Creed 3. Oh my god. Coming out in October. So cool. They showed gameplay for the first time. I was like shivering in my boots. It was amazing. And they had this really cool CG scene where uh, Connor like jumped up on some uh, Americans and like cr like shot a bow at a British guy. Anyways, it was really cool, and I can't wait for Assassin's Creed 3. Seriously, cannot wait. Uh, that if that was not the thing that stole E3, the game that stole the show, I don't know what was. But uh, the last thing, this might have been the thing that stole the show, it was called Watch Dogs, and it's like this new hacking. It's a new IP, first off, which is really cool. New game, new universe, new everything. And it's like this, I, I can't even tell you what it is. It's like a, it's like an open world GTA-esque kind of game that involves hacking and killing people and there's like some kind of corporate system and it's that kind of thing. But uh, if you want to know more, link to the trailer in the description. But anyways, Ubisoft had a really good overall spread and presentation. Really liked it. Next up, I'm going to talk about the PlayStation press conference. So, I was actually overall impressed with it. Um, they talked about a really cool game from the people that made Heavy Rain, Quantic Media. And, you know, they have very uh, story-heavy based games, not a lot of just visceral gameplay stuff going on. It's called Beyond Two Souls, and it actually stars Ellen Page as the main character. 
and they use her face, just everything. It was very incredible graphics. And I can't really tell you what it's about because I don't really know, but link in the description, of course, again, uh, if you want to see that. Next up, they talked about PlayStation All-Stars, which takes all of the awesome PlayStation uh, Sony stars, you know, Nathan Drake, uh, they even have the Big Daddy, uh, Kratos, all these guys. It's kind of like Super Smash Bros. for PlayStation. It actually looks really cool. It looks like something I would buy if I invited a bunch of friends over and we had one of those uh, typical, like, PlayStation commercial hangouts and stuff, you know? You know what I mean? Anyways, they had a huge, huge emphasis on PlayStation Plus, which is that service that you pay for. It's kind of like Xbox Live, but they give you free games, which is kind of interesting. So that was cool. Uh, they talked about... Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation for the Vita. They didn't talk a lot about the Vita, which was kind of surprising, but uh, they talked about Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, which is kind of like this standalone, not standalone, but it's like a side-by-side -side game. You play as a girl assassin. Anyways, uh, that was pretty cool. They talked about Far Cry 3. You can play it as four screen, or not four, not, not split screen, but it has a co-op mode, which is really cool. Looking forward to that uh, if I do get Far Cry 3. Uh, God of War Ascension, which is the God of War prequel, that looked really, really cool. Um, a lot of people were like, it looks the same as God of War 3, but I'm okay with that. You know, more Kratos, more story. I think God of War 3 was at the limit the PS3 can take as far as, gra as, far as graphics. It, was, it looked incredible. And lastly, they talked about The Last of Us, which is this new IP. It's kind of like a Uncharted-esque kind of game. It's a PS3 exclusive. I'm so looking forward to this. They have this really cool stealth scene. And it's kind of post-apocalyptic. I think everybody died except for a few people. That's why it's called The Last of Us. And you play as like a middle-aged, grungy-looking kind of guy with this little girl that you bring along. Anyways, really cool-looking game. Uh, they had a sweet demo. They killed some guy with a shotgun at the end. It was really cool. Shot him in the face. Pretty awesome. And finally, Nintendo. I'm not going to talk a lot about Nintendo because I don't really know what to talk about. They just emphasize a lot of Wii U. They didn't really have a lot of titles to bring up. Uh, like, Mass Effect 3 is going to be on the Wii U, and like a Ninja Gaiden game. There just wasn't a lot of stuff interesting about the Nintendo press conference, which was kind of, you know, iffy. But they also, uh, they really pushed the 3DS a lot more than I thought they would. I guess that's kind of like their console or something like that. But I was kind of, you know, at the end of that, I was thinking, what else, Nintendo? And that's really all I got to say for E3 for you guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, be sure to check out more Jelly Red Giants. Uh, link in the description to our channel. And you can find a lot of entertaining content, all that stuff. This weekly news show will be more weekly, and I'll come up with a name next week. But anyways, once again, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.